and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join me in the shed. I'm in the shed because it's incredibly windy outside today and it's um, not very pleasant so I've come into the shed um, and this video this week is I'm going to do a video on roses and I have done roses in the past, how to take cuttings and things like that but this video um, this is about looking at your favourite roses and how you can extend their flowering so how to prune them at this time of year, how to cut them back after the flowers have gone over. Um, also, um, how to take cuttings, just very quickly, um, just going recapping on how to take cuttings. And then I also wanted to look at how to preserve the bloom. So um, the favourite roses that you've got, um, once they go over in the summer, then you've got nothing to enjoy. So I thought it'd be quite nice to look at how you can preserve the roses um, by drying them. Um, and also by using silica to um, dehydrate them and you can enjoy the open blooms for longer. So I'm in the parterre with the disembowed roses. I hope you can hear me because it's terribly windy and I'm having a few problems with my mic but anyway we'll see how we go. So the Desdemona roses have given us another lovely flush. They've been really really lovely but a lot of them are starting to um, go over. So I'm just going through them and I'm deadheading and when you deadhead roses so if you've got a if you've got say like that there's still three buds to come but you can see the one in the middle is dead so I just cut it off there just take the dead one off and leave the buds to come but if you've got one like this which is um, all has can you see that um, has all gone over then I will um, cut it right back to the next leaf joint so that one there so I won't just cut off um, the individual flower head like I did with that one. Instead, I'll cut right down to the bottom and we may get another flush if we're lucky. So that's good. Um, also what I'm doing, I've been um, drying some flowers and I have dried, I've had quite good success with rose buds. So something like that, which I'm gonna cut off, would dry really, really well. So the buds are just starting to open as you can see. So by turning it upside down and hanging it, um, the little rosebuds will dry and um, then we can preserve it and, and use it in flower arrangements throughout the year. So that's what I'm doing with some of the little rosebuds. Um, so we'll see how we go with that. So we'll just go through the parterre and have a bit of a sort out. So some of the roses will just be cut back, um, deadheaded, and the spent flowers will go on the compost heap. Some of the roses um, with the tight, um, not tight, but slightly opening little buds will be used for drying and any perfect lovely little blooms will be used um, to um, with some silica to um, preserve them and keep them looking nice. And then also some of the material can be used um, to do cuttings. So we've got quite a lot of options and things that we can do. So we're just going to go through them and sort out which, which is for which. So I'm in the greenhouse now and um, I've just filled up quite a big pot I'm using um, with some just multi-purpose compost. And I've got these roses here. Um, I'll just get a little pot to cut them into so a lot, nearly all of the stems are in flower you should really try and choose a non-flowering stem but I didn't really have any so all I'm going to do is I'll cut off the all the blooms and um, then what I'll do that one's that stems a bit bent so I'm not going to use that I'm going to cut it off there I'll strip out the lower leaves and then I'll just stick it in the pot and I'll do the same with these. So this one, um, again just cut it off. I've done lots of videos on taking rose cuttings if, if you want to watch that. So that's that. You, you can use um, rooting compound if you want to but you don't really need to, it does just as well, particularly at this time of year, it's a really good time to do it. I tend to cut the top the top one on a slight slant just so it doesn't get wet and um, you know, when it rains, it doesn't hold on to the water and rot. 
and you tend to stick it, stick the cuttings around the side of the pot, again because the water doesn't tends to accumulate in the middle, so less likely to rot off. You can add vermiculite if you're worried about the soil getting too sodden. Um, but I'm not going to bother actually. And um, I don't need loads of them. I just want maybe perhaps one or more plant per um, per quadrant. And there we are. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Oops, five. Five little rose plants. And this is one, I'll just show you the one that I've already done. This is the one that I did, I'm not really sure when I did it, I can't really remember doing it. I guess it was last autumn, um, but it's quite a nice little plant. So in the autumn, this autumn, I will um, put it in the ground. It's just so dry and um, you know it's been so hot so I'm not going to put it in at the moment because I in the pot I can keep it well watered and keep it healthy if it goes into the ground at this time I think it might die so I'll keep it a bit longer here and then when the autumn comes it's a really good time to either plant their root roses or pot growing roses so there we are that's a nice little job done and the most important thing which I have a habit of not doing is um, labelling things properly. Does do no, no. So, and I'm going to give that a washer and I'll just leave that outside. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do, um, I've just got in front of me here some, some of the roses that we've um, picked. So these are just perfect, beautiful little roses um, and buds. I've even got some of the um, clematis the um princess kate clematis i'm just going to show you this is um this these are some roses that i've already done in the silica so you can just see that they've dried absolutely beautifully um they're very delicate but they're absolutely perfect so i'm really loving that and this is um this is one of the um, chrysanthemums that i did so I don't know, really know what I'm going to use them for. There's another chrysanthemum, but they're lovely peachy colour. So I thought it'd be quite nice to do to do the same with um, with these as well. So I'm just going to place them in the silica, and then I cover them over with um, with more silica. I'm going to take off some of these petals because they're just a bit loose. Um, needs to be trimmed I think. That one will have to go in flat so I'll just get the um, secateur. Okay I'm back with my secateur so I'm just going to cut that off and I'll put that in like that. I'm not going to have them touching. I'll just get some gloves. I'm just using a teaspoon just to um, cover it over gently. And the nice thing with silica is you can, um, once you've used it, it can be reused. Just heat the crystals up again in a microwave or or the oven, and they will. Um, you can reuse them again and again and again. So it's very economical. And it takes about. I think we left the other ones for about. Um, I think about five days. So let's see what it says on here. What does it say? Um, allowed to dry normally a few days, so they're quite unspecific, but I think we left them about five days. And I'll do the same with the um, clematis.
and then we'll just leave those we'll keep them we won't keep them in the shed it's too hot in here but i'll just keep them in the house in a cool dark place um for about five days so that's another way of um of um, preserving so i've got the ones in the silica in here and i'll put those in the house and then the other way of preserving flowers is of course by drying so um here i've got some rose buds that i've um i've cut back and i'm just gonna oh dear. so what i'll do with those is hang them upside down i'm not going to do it in here because this shed gets quite hot but I'll just take you down to the, the other, we've got this little potting shed, little brick built um, potting shed that's um, it's kind of full of cobwebs and not very nice, but it's cool in there. And I've been, um, I've got my bike in there, so I haven't really got a hanging rack or anything. That might be something to get in the future. But what I've been doing is just tying them with string and hooking them on my um, the handlebars of my bike. So we'll take you down and... Um, go and have a look at how the ones we did last Olivia and I did some last weekend I don't know if there were roses in there there might have been I can't remember but we'll go and have a look and we'll go and hang these up as well so we're in um, what we call the little potting shed as I said it's quite um, dusty and cobwebby we don't really use it for a lot other than storing my bike so we'll go and have a look and see how the um, dried flowers are looking Quite good really. So we've got some heliochrysomes, the straw flowers. We've got some echinops, which bits are falling off. And these are the roses, aren't they pretty? Look. Let's see what else we've got. It's like Christmas going in here. Let's see what there is. more straw flowers and they're the little um cupid's arrow the ones that we got from john lord's garden that i've dried they're nice here we've got um more roses so i did this experiment to see if you dry them when they're in tight bud would they open up and the answer is no so you're better to wait until they are slightly open um, that's the um i think that's the achillea and this is the um classic florist flower this is gypsophilia that's lovely and these are the um, quaking grass which are lovely as well really really nice what i'm going to do now i've got two bunches of um, roses so these are the um, desdemona so they are nicely just starting to open and then i also did some i was cutting back the um, olivia roses as well these are quite thorny and quite difficult to handle but I'll just ouch try and show you them so and i've done some which are more open just to experiment and see um, if that works or not but I'm very pleased with all these um, I love these straw flowers they're lovely so I'm quite excited to go and do some arrangements so next I'm just going to tie up um, little bunches of roses and I'm not going to do them all together because I want to try and um, so kind of keep them apart to allow the air to circulate around them so I'm just going to tie them up in just small, small little bunches and just using some string and then I'll hang them spaced out to allow the air to circulate around them and um, dry more thoroughly. So we'll leave them for, I guess, um, a week or even two weeks and we'll just monitor them and see how they're doing. So come into the spooky shed and um, I'm just hanging it on. This is the... Um, my bike so I'm just going to hang it on the handlebars of the bike that seems to work quite well and this is the um, Mary Tiller so we just leave it there I've, I've put some paper across the window to um, make it a little bit darker in here so it's nice and cool nice and dark and hopefully that will do the job I hope you enjoyed that thank you very much for watching and I'm going to go inside and use some of those dried flowers and um, try and be a bit creative and um, not a lot.
brilliant little flower arranging but I'm going to give it a go and I quite enjoy it so thanks for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.